Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Hair loss, also known in professional circles as alopecia, can occur on the head or other parts of the body. However, baldness, which is loss of hair on the head, is what we are most familiar with in these parts. People have between 100,000 to 150,000 hair follicles on the head. About 100 hairs are lost each day. In order to maintain a normal volume, hair must be replaced at the same rate at which it is lost. Initial indications of hair thinning are more hairs than usual left in the comb or hair brush after brushing or more hair lost after shampooing. Styling can also reveal areas of thinning such as a wider parting or thinning crown. The numbers of people seeking professional solutions to hair loss globally more than doubled from over 360,000 to about 800,000 in 2008. In the studio with me today is Ayo Otobanjo, CEO of the Vinci Hair Clinic Lagos, and he will be talking to us about hair loss and possible restoration. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you for inviting me. I know we spoke about, uh, you know, brushing of hair. That sounds like a woman. But is this a guy thing? It, the hair loss actually doesn't resolve directly from brushing the hair. Uh, hair loss has different types. There are different types of hair loss. Or but is it a guy thing? Is it men? It affects men and women. Um, and women. Equally, but differently. Equally. Equally, but differently. Um, the types of alopecia there are uh, what we call androgenetic okay. alopecia. That sounds like uh, a man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is what is commonly seen in men, you know, when you get the U-shaped pattern baldness. Uh, but you also get in women as well. Uh, but the women's pattern is not really as, well, it's not really pattern no, basically. It's more diffuse. On a personal note, mm. I don't think I've seen a bald woman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There are. There are. Um, the, 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 the thing about Nigerian women, especially if we just take Nigerian women, is uh, most of them with the hair loss issues tend to cover up the hair loss, you know, with wigs and styling and, styling and you know, also, for, you know, prosthetic uh, uh, tools. Um, so it, it's not that obvious. But with men, obviously, it's very obvious because okay, you see... But you said, you know, both men and women equally yes now now yeah. that is that is shocking yes but yeah. with different patterns maybe different that's patterns. why we don't see so much precisely of precisely hair. precisely how how do the patterns differ well culturally i mean i think we we come to expect men of a certain age to to go bald um i mean we used to <laughs> <laughs> precisely but we don't see uh female you know losing the hair i mean it's just not an acceptable thing and that is the reason why, whilst men will be quite happy to go bald and be, you know, go out there and do whatever they do every day, women tend to conceal this, and that is why they're not that prominent. What doesn't mean that they don't, they don't suffer from hair loss as equally as men. Mm -hmm. Now, why is there hair loss anyway? Well, I mean, there are, like I said, there are different types of uh, hair loss or alopecia. You've got the androgenetic alopecia, which is, uh, has a genetic uh, element to it. Uh, it's actually caused by a particular hormone in the body called dihydrotestosterone. Uh, we call it DHT. You see, that sounds like a man again. <laughs> testosterone. Uh, but it's it, it, it equally present in men and women. Do, and what kind of hair loss is this? Look at that's a well, patch gone from the middle. Precisely. Now that could be a female type uh, baldness. Okay. Okay. And that that's looks to me to be more of a female type baldness. Okay. With the men, the, the, the pattern of the baldness actually starts from a thinning of the frontal hairs and it gradually recedes to the crown. Okay, over, I'm over sorry years. I interrupted you there. No, okay. We were talking about um, why there's hair loss. Well, precisely. So you've got genetic factors at play in some cases. Um, and uh, you've also got, um, you know, uh, alopecia areata. Uh, which is uh, a form of hair loss, which is very sudden in most people. You just wake up one day and all of a sudden a clump of hair is falling off your scalp and it's totally bald. A clump? A clump of hair. You just fall off. And that is usually caused by either an autoimmune disease of some sort, you know, to do okay. with the blood cells. Or it could be, you know, quite life-changing stress events, you know, divorce or... No, but if, if somebody loses clumps mm. of hair, yeah. clumps, 
grounds, correct? He should run to the hospital, shouldn't he? Of course, of course, absolutely, because there are underlying uh, issues there, you know, which needs to be dealt with. The hair loss is just a manifestation of those underlying issues. So, yes, absolutely, the first part of course should be to their doctors, and obviously if their doctor is not uh, qualified enough to give them any specific specialist help, then they're more than likely to come to our clinic. Uh, you know, so that's what we do. And we see, we see a fair number of patients with uh, alopecia areata. So that's another type. But one of the other types, or more, more common types of hair loss is what we call traction alopecia. I mean, that is so okay, prevalent in Nigeria. <laughs> yes, that is precisely, precisely. <laughs> and it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, I've done a bit of research on this, especially uh, in Nigeria. And what I've found is <laughs> shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, basically, the, the hair relaxers that most of these women use, um, you know, have many corrosive chemicals uh, in them. Um, you know, with, at a pH factor of about 15, it has the same qualities in terms of alkalinity as ammonia. Is this illegal? Um, it's not illegal. I think the, the, the issue of the relaxer, obviously one needs to be aware that it's, it's very corrosive. It's not healthy for the scalp. It causes a lot of scalp diseases. But the other thing is the misapplication of the hair relaxer. That is what compounds the problem. Okay. So you've got a product which is quite dangerous by itself. But can be but, managed. But can be managed precisely. And then you compound it by not reading the instructions clearly and not following instructions you know, to, the, to the letter. Because the people that have made it obviously realize that if you don't do this, it might result in scalp you know, being burnt or scalp dermatitis, as we okay. call it, so yeah. So we, we talked about traction now. Is that the only reason for female baldness? It's usually uh, the most common, especially in Nigeria. I can't believe I'm talking about women. Yes, <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is, uh, it is usually the most common. Uh, it's, it is to do with the chemical relaxes, but also with the type of tight braiding that most women tend to do. Uh, and really, people just don't give their hair enough time to rest. You know, constantly relaxing, constantly you know, pulling. braiding, pulling, and it put, puts a lot of stress on the follicles, so yeah. Okay, now, um, I know that cancer mm. causes, well, cancer treatment, treatment correct. causes hair loss. Correct. And now you've spoken about autoimmune diseases. Yes. Are there any other diseases that could cause hair loss? Well, the, 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 cancer, the loss of hair due to cancer, obviously we know is down to chemotherapy. Uh, treatments. That's usually a temporary thing, temporary hair loss, because hair is restored back to its former glory, uh, former health. Uh, Even so that after radiotherapy? Yes, in most cases, yes. I mean, unless there are other underlying hair loss issues, but usually, yes. Um, the other type of hair loss, I mean, I mentioned androgenetic hair loss. Uh, I think men typically uh, have come to accept that, look, you know, once you reach a certain age, you should expect to be bald. But it doesn't have to be like that. It really doesn't but have to be like that. we keep going back to the issue of age. Is age a factor? It isn't, actually. It, there is an element of age, but it's not, it's not a major determining factor as to uh, how you lose your hair, especially in androgenetic alopecia. I've had patients as young as 17 come into the clinic suffering from the initial stages of hair loss. It's very distressing. Very distressing. It would be at yes, 17. Yes, absolutely. Now, Absolutely. I've heard some people say, you know, this, these children are giving me gray hair. <laughs> Their trouble is just so much. I, I'm wondering, is it true? Does that happen? And going further, can that also cause hair loss? I think, stress? <laughs> I think, I think that's just a saying. I mean, it's just parents saying, look, you know, you give me a hard time. <laughs> gray hair doesn't come from kids giving their parents a hard time. <laughs> it's simple. Okay, now, yeah. this, this is a woman, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can also see she has gray hair, so okay. I think it would be safe to assume she's, she's elderly. She's elderly. Yeah. But this is, this is what we're used to. Okay. We're used to yeah. older people mm -hmm. losing hair. In this case, I think it's just thinning. Okay. So she's having more space between her hairs. Okay. Isn't that an age-related thing? Uh, partly, uh, partly, but uh, it could also be other, t you know, other reasons. Uh, obviously not... Having consulted with her, uh, it's difficult for me to really understand exactly what, uh, you know, has uh, caused the hair loss. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there is an element that, uh, you know, as you get older, um, your hair perhaps is not as healthy as it used to be. Yeah. And that's okay, more reason why you need to take more supplements, you know, to support it. Now, this is the million naira question. Right. Is balding permanent and progressive? No. 
No, after a stage, it stops. Um, without help? Without help, correct. After the stage, it stops. I mean, that's why you see men, typically, with the kind of U-shaped yes. pattern to the they boulders. They start with an M. Uh, yes, yes. And, and they end up with a U. From precisely, the precisely. And, you know, we, we do a range of treatment options, even for advanced hair loss. So, uh, scalp pigmentation, it's a very popular treatment for men, you know, with a uh, bald, uh, bald head. And that gives them the confidence to go out in the world, especially young guys, who obviously have started losing their hair at a very young age. You know, they don't want to look 40 when they're only 20. 